Cubs Post Game Live, presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. And Bryant crushes one to left. And it's gone. Three nothing Cubs. And he drives this one out into deep center. Back on it, Herrera. Gone. Left handed Ben just went deep. Ben Zobris goes yard. Four nothing. A big three spot in the sixth there, courtesy of Chris Bryan and Ben Zobris, and the Cubs not done there. A total eight runs on 13 hits to finish off. The Phillies take their seventh road series of the year. That's out of nine. I'd say that's not too bad. And John Lackey will get to him. A lot of offense. I think two through eight, all creating all those hits. Pretty nice. Well, we welcome you in here, everyone, to Cubs Post Game Live, presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield, along with Todd Hollinsworth. I'm Kelly Kroll. I know it sounds like a broken record, but it's one that I know Todd Hollinsworth doesn't mind talking about because he just loves the dominance of this Cubs starting pitching right now. And uh, John Lackey turning in his eighth quality start of the season, another tremendous outing. Well, it certainly set the table for the day. You go back to the beginning of this ball game. I mean, we look at the final score and we say, ah, oh, that's a convincing Cubs win, right? The offense rolls 8 to 1. John Lackey does this thing, but for half of this ball game, it was a little bit of a different story. Oberholzer has to come into the game after Velasquez leaves after two pitches, and it kind of changes the dynamic, your approach, your thoughts as an offense. Kind of, we go from facing a hard throwing right hander to a somewhat of a soft tossing left hander. The offense doesn't get in gear, but what's John Lackey do? Works his way through a little bit of trouble in the first inning, and that's it. Settles in and settles down. As I said, finished off his start today with retiring 16 straight Phillies. Just impressive stuff. Uh, had it all working, used the fastball, the low zone an awful lot. I'll say this today. The one thing that really did stand out to me in Lackey's performance today, the ability, you see it right there, to get in on hitters, both lefties and righties, both for purpose and for, with, with some swings, especially with the fastball. That's the one thing that I felt kept Phillies hitters upright meaning it opened up the entire strike zone when you can pitch with command on the inner half to both sides of the plate you keep hitters honest you don't allow them to creep out over the plate you don't allow them to look in certain spots John did that so well today particularly with his fastball yeah he faced this Phillies lineup just 10 days ago tweaked a few little things and was tremendous once again seven shutout innings three hit ball seven K's no walks for his seventh win in the season and here's a look at what he's done in his last eight starts four and one lowered his ERA to 1.59 and a 0.794 whip Todd I know you knew we all knew he was pretty good the way he led the Cardinals last year but has anything surprised you with just how good he's been this year? No, because he's a rhythm guy. And when he gets into the rhythm and you watch how he's been using all of his pitches, his mix, I mean, he's got the ability to kind of change gears if he needs to change gears. And that's really what it comes down to for me. We don't watch John just, you know, his fastball command has absolutely been impeccable. It's been off the charts good, which opens up the rest of his game. But his secondary pitches, he leads a lot of time with a first pitch slider, first pitch curveball. He'll set up his fastball. He's working in and out right now, which makes him in a lot of ways unhittable. And you see that in the whip I mean guys he's not walking hitters he's attacking the strike zone and again there's no pattern to play off of I talked about that a little bit coming into today's game having just seen the Phillies a couple starts ago sometimes you want to change those patterns up and because all four of his pitches are working so well for him right now he can do that easily he can change that pattern he can lead with the fastball first time through the lineup make some adjustments the second time through and still expect good results he's not searching for a slider at any point during the game he's not looking for that curveball and having to rely just on his fastball he's been able to rely on all of his pitches and that's how good he's been over that eight game stretch. One of the things I heard Joe Madden say that he's found interesting this year is the sophistication at which Lackey dissects what's happening in front of him and that was something Madden didn't really know about him but has been very impressed with this year and now we have to go into what the starters as a whole have done in the rotation lately. The Fab Five it's been used so Chris Kampka we're going with the phenomenal five and you look at it if only Cap were here to say phenomenal I can't do it One quite as well cap words, I'm right? trying just for you but take a look at these numbers a 2.30 ERA over 372 innings there's your whip at 0.97 when you're talking about five guys combined turning out these numbers I mean, Todd, what more can you say? Well, you start with the innings, the number of innings that you're getting, and you see the hits right there. 372 innings pitched, 260 hits allowed. 
that's just absolutely ridiculous. It, it's speaking to unhittable. Now, again, it's an organizational thing here. Let's remember this. We, we look at this rotation. We can certainly recognize the talent. We can separate them out and talk about them individually and why they're having a lot of success. But what I do like to talk about, and you did see a little bit of it in the game today, the defensive positioning. Mm -hmm. This goes organizationally speaking. If we're going to pitch to this side of the plate or we're trying to attack this part of a hitter's zone, defensively we need to set ourselves up so predictably playing the numbers we know where our guys are going to be defensively. We had like two or three line outs in the ball game. Balls right at guys. Now sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. Think back to the Arietta start where the ball was just seemingly falling in all over the place, where the game was just off a little bit. What you saw today is pitching to the scouting report, pitching to what you're looking to do as a team. So I, I mean again, we've got tremendous athletes out there for the Cubs defensively. They're a very good defensive team. They can go get the baseball, but at the same time they're in position to make the plays. That's a really great point. John Lester was the one to say it the other day. Of course, we have been doing some really great things as a starting staff, but let's not overlook what this defense is doing right. behind us. So let's go ahead and take a look through today's highlights. Bottom of the first, men on the corners. You're going to see Freddie Galvis uh, fly to left here, kind of shallow, and Albert Almora is going to be able to show off that defense and that arm. How about this for a welcome to the bigs? Yeah, it's a great, great throw right there. Does a nice job setting his feet and getting himself in position. Not easy for a left fielder because as you saw, the ball was kind of drifting. The wind was playing tricks out there a little bit today, leading him into center field, but he did a nice job getting his shoulders turned. That's education. That's minor league education. Getting yourself into the right position so that you can get that strong throw off. You see it right there. No hesitation. Got his feet in place and gets the strong throw off. I was surprised they decided to, to challenge him because of the short fly ball. Maybe they thought, well, it's his first big league start. Well, they paid the price. <laughs> Certainly did. Well, Cubs had a great scoring chance in third here. Montero leads off with a single. And then Baez will later have a single. He takes second. After a bad throw, you're going to see this here. I, I was also surprised by uh, this throw. And uh, Montero going to head on around a third. And then John Lackey will come to the plate. And he grounds to second. Throw to home here. Yes, gets Montero. Uh, Praying on my Montero's but, uh, speed a little bit right there um, from deep seconds. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, Fowler's going to have a chance to step up and get something done with a couple guys still on, but he uh, grounds into a double play here, Todd. Um, didn't slow him down, though, offensively from what they did as a whole today. Well, I thought that they were going to certainly start to put putting together better at bats, uh, certainly against Overholter. As I said, going back to the beginning of the ball game, things changed. The dynamic, you got all these lefty, you're going lefty now. Now, this, to me, is really, in a lot of ways, the play of the game because this is what kind of woke the offense up this double play uh, you know maybe I shouldn't assume that but again at least you, you would assume one out he rushes the throw and again you have to consider the circumstances the way pitchers do this stuff all the time PFPs right Montero's running right there you've got one of the slower guys on the team you've got plenty of time to turn it he panics look how quick he's trying to get rid of it throw it on the run and throw it off his wrong foot Throw, errant throw right there, and what does that do? It sets up Baez here. So Overholter did a nice job kind of keeping himself in the ball game and changing speeds, but Baez put together a good at bat, gets contact right here, squeaks it through the left side, and the Cubs are going to get the lead as Zobrist comes around to score. Yeah, men on first and second there for Baez to uh, single to left, and Zobrist comes home. And uh, Cubs are on the board with that. We go to the sixth, the man on for Chris Bryant. And this is where things really got going for the Cubs. Well, I think it's very interesting. That was the third pitch at the top of the strike zone that he saw in that at bat. And uh, Mr. Bailey, this is guy's kid can hit. I kept thinking, you know, you're going to challenge him, dare challenge him up there again, give him three looks. I know you throw hard, 93 miles an hour, and he's good, uh, Andrew Bailey. But again, that's three looks of the fastball up, and he got to it right there. 400 was it, 32 feet, all about it. He's handled that pitch well when he sees it multiple times in bat you see him handle it well again right there yeah Chris Bryant's 14th of the year three nothing Cubs later in the inning Ben Zobrist and this had to feel good two nice hits today this is second one for Zobrist but certainly to break out of that 0 for 17 or whatever nice. it was slump with that interesting playing off of the uh, base hit uh, the first thing I thought of is is Ben Zobrist a really streaky hitter no of course not he's <laughs> a very consistent hitter uh, but again you're right we talk about the offer that he had been kind of stuck in gets the base hit gets a little spinner a little slider that doesn't do much out over the plate drives it out for his eighth home run. Cubs up 4-0 and we jump to the eighth after a Chris Bryant single and a stolen base. 
Anthony Rizzo will step up right there, come through with the double to left, driving home Bryant. He extends his hitting streak to seven games, and the Cubs take a 5 0 lead. Yeah, great piece of hitting right there by Anthony. This is a 95 mile an hour fastball in the toughest place for any hitter to really get a hitter to stay on a baseball. We talk about Anthony going through his struggles, getting himself out of them. This is a great reflection of that. That is a 95 mile an hour fastball in the low corner. He drove it the other way. And this one may be a highlight to remember for Albert Almora, his first major league hit, and it's an RBI nonetheless as Rizzo crosses home plate there. Uh, congratulations to Albert Om Almora. This is not an easy task, always getting that first one. And most guys will tell you that was the hardest hit I ever got. You know what? <laughs> Gets it through the middle right there, picks up an RBI, so a lot of firsts right there. Great throw in the first inning. Good moment for him. There's a lot more hits coming your way, young man, but good to get that one out of the way. Time for our Elk Grove pitching recap. As we mentioned earlier, Velasquez lasted just two pitches, uh, both of them 87 mile an hour fastballs, retiring Dexter Fowler before leaving then with right bicep soreness. Uh, you can also take a look at John Lackey. We've talked a lot about him, but I wanted to ask you, Todd, for a team that has game planned to face another big righty, and then right away they bring in a lefty and a righty, of course, throughout the game. But how much does your mindset change as a hitter in that moment? Well, it turns it into a bullpen day. It's not an easy task. I mean, you do. You prepare yourself for a starter that day. You anticipate seeing him a minimum of four or five innings at least. Uh, Velasquez is a young gun for this Phillies team, a big reason why they've been hovering around 500. They're starting pitching, and he's a big reason why. Now, those first two pitches, I thought he was game planning. We talk, I talked about this a little bit in the pregame <laughs> show, thinking, you know, are, are we going to see him lead with some secondary pitches, maybe set up his fastball a little bit better? I actually thought that's what he was doing, but he leaves with the right right bicep tendonitis. There was something that was off there. I thought those were two changeups because that's actually the speed or velocity for which he throws his changeup, 87 miles an hour. But clearly, that's not what he called for right there. Those were supposed to be fastballs right there. Dexter had a pretty good pass at one, mm -hmm. but again, at 87 miles, an hour and knew something wasn't right had to get him out of there and the Cubs eventually get going well we were talking about the whip earlier here are the whip leaders in Major League Baseball wow and one two three four if I could count them all bold print there of the six let's see eight guys on the board there seven guys on the board there sorry um, four of them Cubs well like I said this really does kind of complete the story when we talk about how good they have been when we talk about them individually we can separate the numbers but when you look at the total right there seven guys on the board four are Cubs starters it is a culmination of the Cubs story this year you know again we, we you know I'm asked all the time to make sense of 41 wins so far this season how and the whys and, you know early on I would say it was a little bit more of the offense setting up the pitching but what's going on right now pitching and defense pitching and defense pitching and defense. I, it's so much fun to watch. It's almost becoming predictable and I think that around here we're starting to expect it. But again to watch the execution to me is so much fun. Again you saw it today. It's making pitches. It takes me back to kind of the first time I really saw this Cubs team doing it with Ryan Dempster, a uh, buddy of mine when he was pitching for the Cubs and this new philosophy of kind of overshifting and playing to the pitching but you know it's got to work hand in hand you've got to execute your pitches and that's where the credit goes to this pitching staff they go out there they execute pitches they understand what the game plan is great relationship with their catchers and then the defense behind them predictably hitting the ball to where you're trying to get them to hit the ball and to what you were saying just then you brought it up the other day the top cubby on that list was of course Kyle Hendricks mm -hmm. and that just speaks to his ability of course to um, you know keep the ball low and and have his defense do the rest really speeds, yeah. we're going to take our first time I'm out here on Cubs Post Game Live, presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield. We'll be right back and name our player of the game. Hmm, I wonder. Cubs Post Game Live is presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. Through it all. Discount Tire will get you the right tire at the lowest price for your vehicle. Get a $70 Visa prepay card when you buy any set of four Michelin tires.
Welcome back, everybody. Let's take a look at today's action. Using all-wheel control, they're moving with such confidence over this terrain. The new 2016 Mitsubishi Outlander Sport. Make your drive a sport. Come in now and get $500 cash back at 0% APR. Yeah, not us. No, nah, no reruns here. Yeah, we have X1 from Xfinity. Everybody crochet tonight. I think we'll just stick with our TV shows. Don't fall for DirecTV. Get four times more TV shows and movies on demand with Xfinity. Sign up today or get started with this great offer. Call or go online. Now available for kids on DirecTV Cinema. The residents of Zootopia are just like us. They have the same problems. Predators and prey live in harmony and sing kumbaya. Hey, watch where you're going, Fox. Fireball. From the creators of Frozen and Big Hero 6. We need to acknowledge the elephant in the room, Francine. Happy birthday. Oh, oh, yeah. Disney Zootopia, rated PG. Find movies kids love on DirecTV Cinema. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Call Adolescent Growth today and see how our proven treatment programs for eating disorders can begin to bring the sunshine back in the life of your teen and your family. Please don't take my sunshine away. Fans, be sure and show your team pride with Cubs checking and official Cubs MasterCard debit card only available at your local Wintrust Community Bank. Go to Wintrust.com slash Cubs to learn, learn more and member FDIC. Well, we welcome you back here to Cubs Post Game Live presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield. Cubs big winners 8 to 1 over Philly taking this series. And our tweet of the day comes from October Proof Cubs fan at aisle 424. Pretty good one. Cubs first round picks today. Baez, four for four, three RBI. Uh, one for second baseman Almora, one for four, one run, one RBI, one outfield assist for Bryant, two for four, and second round. That's what those are, and two RBI, one home run. It took me a while the way those all divvied up right there, but that wasn't too bad of a tweet for the day from October Proof, uh, pointing out the uh, first rounders and all that they did this afternoon. It was impressive, about. and we will talk about one more coming up as we talk about our UPS store taking care of business player of the game. Javier Baez, he entered the afternoon hitting 248. Now at 274 after a four for day, four day with three RBI, the first run of the afternoon for it's, the Cubs. It, it really is entertaining to watch Javi Baez's career develop. I, I mean, I, he's got to be proving this to himself because when he tones it down, you see right there, he didn't even stride. No, no big leg kick, just kind of kept that front foot on the ground with two strikes right there and leaked one through the left side. He's got to be proving to himself what contact does because that's what this game is, is representative of. Base it the other way. Base it, you know, 15 hopper through the left side. Now he gets an elevated fastball. Uh, again, every one of these swings today completely under control. And it's interesting, you kind of go back over the last couple of weeks, and the first thing I thought, you know, kind of watching Javi is that he's getting a little big again. He's kind of trying to, you know, muscle <laughs> up and swing for the fences. It's just the way that it appears. But again, such a nice approach today. Think about this, four hits in the game, one to right, one to center, two to left, including that double right there. Three RBIs, outstanding day, and congratulations, his first four hit day. And you're talking about the maturity at the plate. Uh, I know Madden's talked a lot about the maturity upstairs mm -hmm. for him this year. Not maybe being this guy a year ago, but now understanding the whole being greater than the individual product. Well, it's very it's very important for players to understand what their role is and wh what the role is on a particular team. I mean, that, that's the way that it goes. What a manager's asking for, what he's asking you to be. Now, we know that, that Baez has got light tower power and that when he lets it go, we saw some of the longest homers early in his career. Impressive stuff. But you pair that with the strikeouts and everything else that went along with it, it was not going to survive at the major league level. And I think he realized that about himself. And again, you see flashes of it where he, where he tries to kind of open it up and stretch it out a little bit. But when you see the approach that he has today, I, I, it has to prove to him how this game at the major league level works because they're not going to just continue to feed you fastballs so that you can hit light tower power that we get to watch. So he's going to have to find ways. I think of that, that the at-bat that he drove in the first run of the game, he was kind of battling. And it wasn't a perfect swing, rolled over it just a little bit, 
but because he found contact, he was able to get it through the left side, drives in a run, kind of sets up the rest of his day. Then he gets a fastball up in the zone, hits it the other way, goes back through the box. I mean, this wasn't four balls off the wall. This was a nice day, a nice approach, and used the entire field. And he, he's rewarded with a 4 4 performance. Yeah, easier to buy in when you're part of a winner as well. And speaking of which, he was one of a long list in the winning box score, which we go to now. Bryant, his 14th homer of the year. Ben Zobris, as we talked about, break out of, broke out of his mini slump. Uh, base hit in the fifth, ended up being the Cubs' first run there, and then his eighth homer of the season. All 12, 13 hits coming two through eight, as I mentioned earlier, Todd. But uh, this is a good day when Joe Madden goes in at the end of post game and takes a look at what his guys did this Yeah, a lot of high fives. Jason Hayward had a nice day as well. Uh, good at bats. And again, as I said, this kind of opened up late. I mean, we talked about that adjustment that they had to make against Overholzer. They were able to get one across, but once they got into that bullpen, this game really did start to open up and the bats got a little bit better. So again, let's not forget it was getaway day. That's not always the easiest day. Played yesterday, last night you come back, you're in the hotel, here you go. I thought it was a pretty darn good approach. Of course, the pitching is what sets this up. It kind of gives you the, the opportunity and the moment to make these things happen. So again, that's what it comes down to. Fantastic performance for John Lackey today. Let that offense kind of get rolling as those innings went along, and this turns into a blowout. Well, and we saw part of that and talked about him a little bit earlier, but for Albert Almora Jr., who got his first Major League knock today, and as well as uh, I think early on in the ballgame, does that defensive play help settle him in when um, he, he throws, you know, uh, no, he knows not so he, much. He, he You're knows he belongs. He knows he belongs. Well, listen, you're going to get tested. You're going to get tested on the bases. You're going to get tested. I mean, this is what the baseball, this is what the game, Major League Baseball, does to you. It's going to test you in all, all angles. And he saw it today. They didn't come out and just throw him cookie after cookie, thinking he was going to get fastballs out over the plate. He saw a lot of breaking pitches. Uh, they pitched him backwards. They saw that he would prey on that aggressiveness. You saw it right there. What did that ultimately buy him? It buys him another one of those. Well, that ends up being his first base hit. You kind of see how this works, right? There's always lessons to be learned. Every game tells you a story, and every one of your bats connects to your next at bat. And Amora made some nice adjustments as this game went on because what he saw was he wasn't going to get a diet of fastballs today. He was going to get a few more breaking balls, and he was going to have to make some adjustments. So he fought. I thought it was an impressive day for him. One for four. Does pick up the base hit right there and the RBI. The nice throw in the outfield. It's a good start. All right. Well, Major League Baseball released the latest voting results for the National League All-Star team, and the Cubs continue to be very well represented. Dexter Fowler has now taken over the lead among outfielders, while the entire starting infield, Anthony Rizzo, Ben Zobers, Chris Bryan, Addison Russell, all remain at the top of their respective positions. Voting continues through the month but very well deserved and what we saw this afternoon is why so many people not just Cubs fans but across baseball are voting for these guys they're they're doing the right things and Todd we're not even talking about on this list what about all the pitchers we know Jake Arrieta is right. headed to San Diego but what about John Lester and John Lackey do they deserve all-star nods I mean it's oh yeah absolutely they're gonna get all-star nods they should get all-star nods uh, this now the, the way that I see it is this we're gonna watch the all-star game this year next month <laughs> the all-star game next month and it is going to be filled with Cubs. It's going to be a Cubs game. There's going to be a crowded plane on the way to the All-Star game. That's the only way that I can wrap it up because this team has played such good baseball. Listen, when a team is on point like they were at the beginning of the year, everybody expected this team to be good, but how good were they going to be? I think they've exceeded most, even the analysts, guys like myself. You know, we watch baseball every day. We talk it every day. How, how good can this team be? I mean, that's just it. You're looking at the offensive players. That's the voting. The pitching staff has been really the biggest story about this team. If they continue to roll and continue to rack up these wins the way that they have, yeah, you, you, you potentially have 10 guys going to the All-Star game. It'll be a fun midsummer classic. Well, uh, it'll also be a fun flight to Atlanta as the Cubs have the day off. They get a win, and we will be right back here on Cubs Post Game Live, presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield, to talk about the upcoming series this weekend against the Braves. There's a sound a ball makes when it catches nothing but net. Everyone loves that sound, that precision. At GMC, we get that. Nothing separates the men from the boys like nothing but net. This is the precision of professional grade. 
Now get 15% below MSRP on select GMC Acadia vehicles in stock. That's over 7,800 below MSRP on this GMC Acadia Denali. Road trip. Nithers, yeah. Can't leave without my Nithers, yeah. It's all about my Nithers, yeah. Everybody wants some Nithers, yeah. Why am I on a donkey? Nithers, yeah. It's a Nithers adventure. Nithers, yeah. Crispy corn dog, please. Creamy mac and cheese. Nithers, yeah. These will not last long. Nithers, yeah. Just like this theme song. Yeah. What would we be? without our mountains, without the things that stand in our way, that make us better. At Coors, our mountain is brewing the world's most refreshing beer, lagered, filtered, and packaged cold. Our mountains make us who we are. Your mountains make you who you are. Whatever your mountain, climb on. From the first building block to the last coat of paint, Menards is here to help. Get an 11% rebate on everything in the store, including great Father's Day gifts. Choose from a great selection of gas and charcoal grills. Kick back in a new zero-gravity chair. Go camping. Or get Dad the latest new power tool. Plus, get an 11% rebate on everything, even sale prices. Now at Menards. Save big money at Menards. We're back with a look at Todd's Keys from the pregame show sponsored by Blue Cross Blue Shield. Uh, don't change a thing. We're going to go ahead and put a line through that and scratch that <laughs> out. And I changed thing. key number one to score more runs than the Phillies. So we nailed that one. We got that one right. Yes, they did. Eight of them. That'll work. Now, now mix it up. Uh, just maybe kind of just talking about John's approach to today maybe the synchronization of his pitches you know how you're gonna go up against this Phillies lineup I thought he did a fantastic job of that uh, clearly the stats proved that out I didn't think he changed too much but enough to keep these guys off balance and again that elevated fastball in on the hands to both the lefties and the righties was a big pitch for him today as he kept these hitters these Philly hitters straight up in the box new kid on the block Al Mora listen one for four had that great throw in the first inning that's what we wanted to see didn't expect him to come out and be the star of the game today as a young man who's kind of you know you know, hitting sixth in the lineup. This is a very talented team and a lot of expectation that goes. I mean, I can only imagine the weight that he feels on his shoulders. He blended in very nicely today and did his part. And I'm sure the guys are very, very excited to have him. Congratulatory uh, high fives, as you mentioned, going around for him. We're going to our four seasons. Who's hot? Who's not? The Cubs' next opponent, the Braves. In June, Chase Darno, 10 for 29 with two doubles, two RBI. However, who's not? Tyler Flowers, two for 16. He hasn't driven in a run in a while and eight K's well talking about Atlanta that is uh, the uh, series will begin on Friday with Jason Hamill against Bud Norris just one for seven one and seven this year with an ERA of 528 as for Hamill he's going for his eighth win of the season and his ERA 214 yeah Jason Hamill nice start coming back off of the game in which he came out with the cramp really good to see I mean I think we were all watching with curious eyes and he was absolutely outstanding maybe one of his best of the season you see it right there only the one hit he allowed in the seven innings six strikeouts 96 pitches and oh by the way he's still swinging in the bat. Man, oh man, these guys can hit. It's so much fun to watch them swing the bat. The biggest, I thought that was the biggest hit in the ball game that day. So, good to see. This is a series going up against the Atlanta Braves about taking care of business, much like the Philadelphia Phillies. Listen, the better team is the Cubs. We know that. They know that. You got to go down there and handle yourself. Take care of business. I was just going to say, what else from the series intrigues you beyond Jason Hamill's start? The better team should win two of three. I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay, and then <laughs> it is the Nationals after that. Well, we thank you for watching Cubs Post Game Live, presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield. For Todd Hollinsworth, I'm Kelly Crawl. We appreciate it. A big Cubs win. They take the series in Philadelphia, and now with a day off before heading to Atlanta. Scared. Scared of what, Danny? The things I can't see. Got a weird feeling. Almost forgot. In case anything happens. Dad, I got this.
<laughs> it's not too big and it's not too small. Chevrolet's crossovers come in three sizes. Trax, Equinox, and Traverse. Who wants to sit in it? I do. Shotgun. Oh, wow. Oh, this car matches me. I like this. It's a perfect fit. Get more than you expect for less than you imagine from the Chevrolet crossover family. Qualified buyers can get 0% financing for 60 months on this 2016 Chevy Equinox. Plus, find your tag to get an extra $22.50 cash allowance on select Equinox in stock. Something's irresistible at Subway restaurants. It's the Steak and Cheese Sub. And all June long, this savory footlong is just $6. But get it fast. This exclusive deal ends soon. Covered with a blanket of delectably melty cheese and topped with your choice of fresh veggies. Maybe even some Chipotle Southwest sauce. Always hot and handcrafted on freshly baked bread. So come in and crush your cravings with a $6 Subway Steak and Cheese footlong today. Subway. Fresh is what we do. Why jump out of a perfectly good airplane? Why not? Chicagoland Skydiving Center was voted the best in the U.S. with a perfect safety record, a one-of-a-kind environment, and round-trip shuttle service from downtown Chicago. Come experience the greatest adventure in the area, Chicagoland Skydiving Center in Rochelle. Visit us at perfectlygoodairplane.com. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Call Adolescent Growth today and see how our proven treatment programs for eating disorders can begin to bring the sunshine back in the life of your teen and your family. Please don't take my sunshine away. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Beer Money presented by Coors Light. I'm Kip Lewis. We are on the south side hanging out with the fans. Let's see if we can give away a little money. Garrett, you know, homecoming weekend here. You got your whole crowd behind you. You know, one of the problems here, people get a little stressed out when you got all these people behind you. You know, you got to think fast on this show. So we're going to do a little Jack McDowell Sox trivia, all right? Black so, Jack McDowell trivia, okay. Yeah, so we're okay. going to start with a $10 question. You ready? Sure, I'm ready. Okay, just relax here. It's okay. not a lot of pressure, a lot of people behind you. Okay. You know? I've had people completely embarrass themselves. All right, so okay. the $10 question, you'll get this right $10 for sure. $10 question, okay. What was, hey, nothing out of the peanut gallery over here. <laughs> what was Jack McDowell's nickname for $10? Black Jack McDowell. Oh, uh, way to go. So $10. ten All right, so you already got you got $10 here. So just hold on to that. Now, here's the deal. Here's the deal, Garrett. You can keep the $10 okay. and just be done with it. it $10 doesn't get you a whole lot nowadays, right? No. Okay. Well, it'll get me a uh, parking. It'll get me parking today. That is true. But but one of these guys will pick up the parking for you. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Now, you want to go for the $20 question? Oh, yeah. I got to go for now, the Now, if you, if you get it wrong, I get that $10 back. Oh. And then someone's really going to have to pay for parking. Okay. Okay. I'm going right. to go for it. All right. It. So, the $20 question. High risk, high reward. All right. In what year did Jack McDowell win the Cy Young Award? What year did he win what the year? Cy Young Award? 1993. Whoa. Look at you. You're right. I love Black yeah. Jack McDowell. Yeah. All right, so now here's, obviously, now we've got a $100 question here. So you can keep the $30 and just be done, or here, hold, hold this. Are you, are, you are you trustworthy? Big money. What's your name? Very trustworthy. Hi, Shay, how are you? All right, here's what I'm going to do, Shay. You hold this, all right? If he gets it right, I want to say you can keep it, but he's got to get the money, all right? All right, Shay, so hold, it's a real $100, Shay, so don't, don't lose that. My company will charge me for it if I lose it. <laughs> we, we don't have a big expense budget sometimes, <laughs> all right? So, Shay, hold on to that, all right? So the $100 question, Garrett, this, it's, everyone ready? You guys ready? All right, $100 question. Okay, $100, let's go for Jack it. Jack McDowell is one of three White Sox pitchers to win the Cy Young. Who are the other two White Sox pitchers to win the Cy Young? I'm going to tell you, the first one was, I'm just going to give you the year. The first one was 1959, because I want Shay to enjoy that $100. Billy Pierce? Oh, man. What, what do I got to give you back, the 10 or the 20? Give me, give me everything. <laughs> Shay, you know what? I'm sorry, Shay. I feel bad, because I wanted you to have the $100, Shay. But you know what? Oh! And that's Gary. Garrett, all right, man. 
It, it, you want to know who it is? I do want to know who it is. Early win. We remember Earl him. Win, yeah. We, he was one of our favorites. Yep. We got we watch him all the time on tape. We do on tape. Um, old tape, black and white tape. And Lamar Hoyt, 1983. Lamar Hoyt. But you know what? Thanks anyway. Hey, it was a pleasure. Appreciate it. It was a pleasure. Thanks, Shay. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for holding the money. Did you guys have fun? Yeah. You ready for you get ready for the fun game today? You guys are so cute. You guys are probably smart though. In a couple of years, like in a few years, we're gonna have you guys play a little beer money. You're ways away. Yeah, don't get too excited now. But in a few years, you guys play beer money with us. All right. All right. Bye, guys. Say thanks, Kip. All right, Jenny, let's start this off with a bang. Beautiful day out here on the south side. Gorgeous. You got your socks gear on, you got your glove. You got a ball, so you don't if you don't really need a ball, right? If a ball there gets into your Sometimes the ball comes around, you just catch it, you grab it. I just The ball just happens to come your way sometimes? I don't know. That's what happens on the south side, you get a ball. How, how early did you start your day today, Jenny? A little early. Like like what time? Give me an idea. Maybe 9:15. 9:15. All right. So you're 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 good and ready to go. Maybe all right. 9 so Jenny. Maybe 9:13. 9:13. I might have lied. Okay. So Jay, let's just play the game. All right. All right. Sox okay. spelling bee. You're okay. a Sox fan, so obviously you can spell anyone's name. All right. Do you want to start with the easier name or the harder name? I definitely want to do it harder. Okay. Okay. So it's a twenty-dollar question, Jenny. Wow, are you, who are you out here with, by the way, Jenny? Just myself. Okay, that makes sense. That's my son. Oh, <laughs> my other son. Those, those are your kids over there? I guess. Oh, no wonder they're hiding out like that. Okay, Jenny, let's start with the, the, right. the $20 name, all right? All right, okay. You got to spell it. Put my game face on. I'm ready. Oh, boy, here we go. Lamar Hoyt. Do I spell Lamar or do I spell Look, Hoyt? You got to spell both, the first and last <laughs> name. L-M-A. Lamar L-M-A-R, and then Hoyt, H-O-Y-T-E. No, no, first name is Lamar. Lamar. Yeah. L-M-A-R. Then Hoyt would be H-O-Y-T-E. Do you all go one more time? Do, you can't worry about it. Come that's on now. Really, that kind of sounds cool. Lamar. L-A-M-A-R-R. -A -R. No, 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 you left out the A and you left the R. So anyways, Jenny... This is uh, not the way I wanted to start things out today, but it's great to meet you. I like your it, shirt. It, it's green. It's I green. I love green. Green's my favorite color. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, hey, great I to meet you. Tattoo. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's a that's a green that's tattoo. Side tattoo. All right, hey, Jenny, great talking to you. Have a, hey, let's play a little catch, Jenny. Right. Just go there. All right. Ready? Hey, let's. Where'd it go, Jenny? Put your game face on. Jenny, I got a show to do. Yeah, do your show. Do you just want to hang out with me all day and we'll just play catch while I do the show? I don't know, I see porn. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Jenny. All right, bye. All right, Rick and David, here we go. We're going to play a little socks clues for Bruce. So I need a name out of this, all right? So the $100 clue, he was drafted by the San Francisco Giants in 1969 out of Kent State University. Do you know who this is? If not, we can go to the can go. I can give you another clue, and it's just it's eighty dollars. You need another. You need another clue. Yeah, I would go for another clue. Okay, yeah. let's go. Eighty dollars. Led the White Sox with fifteen wins in 1977. <laughs> I know Steve Sachs. Or no, Steve Stone. Think so? I think so. All right, we'll go with your answer, man. You Steve Stone. That? Steve Stone. I like that. You guys, that was easy. You got it. Steve Stone led the White Sox with 15 wins in 1977. That's $80 you just got. Awesome. I don't have $80 on me. I need the bank to come over here and give me the $80. I've got five, but I think you probably want the 80. You want the 80? All right. All right. You guys, that was, that was simple. All right. Let me just count it because how old is Let's see. 20, 40, 60, 80. Thank you, All right, guys. Good job, man. Appreciate it. All right. Have a great day. All right, guys. We need What would we be without our mountains? Without the things that stand in our way? That make us better? At Coors, our mountain is brewing the world's most refreshing beer. Lagered, filtered, and packaged cold. Our mountains make us who we are. Your mountains make you who you are. Whatever your mountain, climb on.
12 bucks is all that's standing between you and a good time. Dine and drink. Happening now. Pick your entree and pair it with a cocktail, wine, or beer for just 12 bucks. Dine and drink. Only at Friday's. Friend versus friend. Alliance versus alliance. Got something to say? Yeah. Those stripes make you look fat. The Alliance Wars rage on. Contest of champions. Who's on your team? This is a chick car. This is a short man's car. This is a cute car. Slow car. This is a single young professional's car. This car has no street cred. This car ain't hip hop. Kidless. Cute. Small. This car doesn't care what you call it. So, Don, same thing. We're, we're going to play a little White Sox trivia. All right, homecoming okay. weekend. This one, $10 question okay. is, what was Tim Raines' nickname? The Rock. There you go. See, the $10 ones were, are working well. Tim the Rock Raines. Let me see. I've got a 10 in here somewhere. All right. We can just skip Here's to a the 10. Oh, you just want to skip <laughs> to the 100? Okay. All right, who's you ready for hold the, this for me? You ready for the... All right. Don't we'll go anywhere with that. We might need it back if he doesn't get these right. <laughs> so the $20 question, you ready? Okay. Roberto Hernandez ranks third all-time in saves for the White Sox. Who ranks first? First, first in saves. In saves for the White Sox. That He's around be... right now. He's, He's somewhere around. not, like, right at this moment. He's not that far away. He's not that far away right now. Like, I'm just... Let's see. See? They're going to get mad at me because they get mad. I, like, get these emails. Hey, hey, don't give away the answers. That's what I get. So, you, come on. I'm helping you out here. Jinx. It's, uh, let's see. First and saves. First and saves for the White Sox. Who is it, guys? <laughs> oh, really? Come on. Anybody know? That's where we're going already? Anybody know? No. 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 <laughs> Jeez. I think my sister I'm stumped. You got, you got, it's twenty dollars. You got, you got to think of such. Just give me a, give me a guess. He's around, like in this vicinity right now. In this vicinity right now. Not like in the parking lot, but he's, he's around here. Right around here. In the field. I mean, he, okay. He might be on the field right now. Don't right now. Hold on, listen. It's, I'm, uh, listen. I am helping you out right now. He is. Right now, he's on the field. He's on the field right, right now. Right now. <laughs> On the field. In the bullpen? He's in the bullpen right thick, now. Ah, uh, thick pen. Thank you. Holy cow. I'm, I'm trying to give money away. Here. All right, hold that. Who's got the 10? Wait a minute. Don't be running away with my money over here. You got the 10, you got the 20. All right, stay right here. All right, so the $100 question. Oh, yeah, you guys like that, huh? You guys keep showing up where the money is, huh? <laughs> Yeah, that's how it is They're nowadays. I know. You guys are smart kids. I didn't know any better when I was younger. All right, hundred dollar question. Okay. Right, do you want? Do you want? Do you want to stop with the thirty? No, let's go. Let's go. You want? All right. Okay. So, how many times did Lance Johnson lead the league in triples? How many times did he lead the league in triples in his in his career? Lance Johnson led the league in triples seven times in his career. You just threw that out. Nope. You're wrong. Okay. <laughs> five. Nine, five. Okay. Five. Five times. Four, Four straight with the White Sox, once with the Mets. Who's got the ten? I have. Give me the ten back. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, really? I feel bad. I keep taking You're money from kids. Who's got the twenty? All right, I get the twenty back. Oh, oh right. yeah. <laughs> See? <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Jeez. All right, we were close. All right, we were close. it was close. Appreciate yeah, thank it. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank Thanks, guys. All right, Ryan, we're going to play a little Sox Clues for Brews. So I'm going to give you the first clue. If you know it, give me the answer because it's $100. Okay. All right? Okay. So for $100, he appeared for the Orioles, Braves, and Rays after leaving the White Sox. Appeared for the Orioles, Braves, and Rays after leaving the White Sox. Another clue. All right, the $80 clue. Acquired from the San Diego Padres. Uh, another clue. All right, $60. Born in Venezuela. Oh, Ozzy Guillen. There you go. There you go. 
Good job. See, you, you got there. You were worried for me. I could see, yeah, yeah. I could see the I worry like, oh. in your face. It just took a little time, that's mm -hmm. all. Got it. All right, so 20, 40, 60. It's all there. All right. It's real, too, man. Thanks, Thank man. You. Appreciate it. All right. Agent Smooth, love the nickname. Love and it. Nick? Ryan. He's, Ryan. He's, he's Agent Smooth is Nick. Agent Smooth and Ryan. Okay, yeah. so Agent Smooth and Ryan, we're going to do something a little different. We're in the Sox parking lot, yeah. but we're going to do a little Cubs trivia, all right? Okay. Yeah, and sure. because, <laughs> because we're doing that, you know, we're going to let you guys team up and do this. Usually it's got to be one person that gets all the answers. So there's a $10 question. You can, like, if you get it right, you can just stop and take the $10 or go on to the $20 question. If you get that right, you can go on to the $100 question. So if you get all three right, you get $130, right? So let's start with the first question. What is the name of the Cubs pitching coach right now? Cubs pitching coach. $10. You got it? Who's got it? Chris Basio. Yeah. All right, there you go. So there's 10. So I, I got a good feeling about you guys, by the way. Okay. So you, you want to you want to continue? Oh yeah. yeah okay. Let's keep going, yeah. I like that. No hesitation. Yeah, we're gonna stop. Yeah. You got look at you got a whole crowd over here we're watching us. Oh, Twenty dollars, yeah, huh? Agent Smooth, you better hey let's with go. a name like let's that, go. you better you better get one of these right though. I don't want him to answer all these. All right. All right? We'll see. We'll see. Twenty dollars. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna make up a new rule right now. One person can't get all these right. Since you're gonna do okay. the double team, one person has here, to contribute. Fair. Is that all right? Yeah. All right. I'm not just giving away money out here. No, All right, $20. Yeah, Who did the Cubs trade away to get former Yankees pitcher Adam Warren? Who did the Cubs trade away to get former Yankees pitcher Adam Warren? Starling Castro. Whoa. <laughs> That's Agent Smooth. Agent Smooth, baby. I see you. Look at that. Man, man. Hey, Agent Smooth, I see you. Yeah, we'll go for the hard All right, so now. We're going, yeah. Are you, you sure? Yeah, we're going to go for it. Give, give us the hard knocks one. All right, so here it is, $100. That means you can buy Coors Light for all Everybody your friends here. over here. Everybody here yeah. is getting a drink. And if you don't, they're all going to be bummed out. Yeah. You're going to be disappointed. It's like a letdown. You know, like you get really excited, then you just kind of crash and burn. That's yeah. kind of where we're at right now. We're the top of the mountain, all right? The $100 question. For which NL team did Len Casper begin his broadcasting career? Which National League team did Len Casper, <laughs> Agent Smooth, hold on, let's just let's, let's, let's take a minute. Do you know this? Yes, I do. Wow. So does he. Mr. Uh, Agent Smooth is well over here because you were about to get $130. Wow. So let's just, you know like how like in soap operas you have that like dramatic pause? Like, you know, in soap operas, like, you, well, you guys are too young. Soap operas, they used to have these, like, dramatic pause. Like, the camera goes and kind of comes back to you a little bit later. Oh, yeah. So we're going to kind of do our dramatic pause. Like, just give kinda, the crowd. Like, give stop. the crowd. Everyone's kind of silent. We just kind of stop for a minute. Now we're back. Okay. Right. So I'm going to put it right here. Okay. What team? Go ahead. The Brewers. Oh! That's what I'm talking about. $130. We are the Coors Brewing Company. And our mountain is brewing the world's most refreshing beer. A beer proud enough to wear our name in big, red, scripted letters. That's why we lager, filter, and package cold. Because we believe every climb deserves a refreshing finish. Whatever your mountain, climb on. I just saved thousands on my loan at LendingTree.com. In less than a minute, I found out how much home I can afford. I like how you shop for loans the same way you shop for flights online. I didn't realize at LendingTree, you can save money on almost any sort of loan. I consolidated my credit card debt with a personal loan. I found a new credit card with 0% interest for 15 months. You just shop, compare, and save. And it's all free. Go to LendingTree right now and start saving. Chicago sports history? Then join CSN's Kelly Kroll for a taping of Beer Money tomorrow at 5 at Jameson's Pub in Frankfurt. Test your sports trivia skills for the chance to take home cash. Beer Money, presented by Coors Light. All 
All right, Joe, so we're going to play a little Bears spelling bee, even though we're out here at the Sox. Uh, do you want to start with the $10 name or the $20 name? Where, where do you want to go? Let's try the $20 name. All right, so the $20 name, Dick Chapura. <laughs> Chapura. First and last name. Well, D I. C K. <laughs> I know. It's kind of funny, huh? <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, Chapora. Let me see. C H A P. You're good. I feel it. Chapora. R A. Give me, give me that last name one more time. C H A U P R. Chapura. No, Chapura. Dick Chapura. C H Chapura Chapura C H A P R A P U R A. There you go. Yeah. I was taking my time, All right. but you know what? Twenty bucks. All right. See what happens is people just they gotta think through it. If you yeah, think through yeah. it, you got. It. All right. Well, so Coors Light is uh... Coors Light. Coors Light messes up the spelling sometimes. Yes, it does. Yeah, you got you got to drink responsibly. That's the word. Not today. No, nah, nah. It's 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 Sunday afternoon. All right. So let's go with the thirty dollar question. You're, you you want to just stop right there? Do you right. want do you want the twenty dollars and go home, or do you want the thirty dollar question? Let's go for the thirty dollar okay. question. Let's make it fun. All right. Let's do that. Brian Bashnagel. B R I A N. All right, we got that. I figured you'd get that right. Let's go with Bash Nagel. Brian Bash Nagel. You're halfway there. B A S H. Think again. See, you're rushing through it. Bash Nagel. Bash. B A C H N A G L E. Okay, guess what? I've got $30 left, and that's all I have. Yeah. So I'm going to give you a second shot at Bash Nagel. So basically what I'm telling you right now mm -hmm. is you were wrong. Okay. But because I like you so much and you're <laughs> drinking a Coors Light, and it's, you know, beer money sponsored by Coors Light, okay. and they don't mind if I give away this final $30. Okay. So you spelled it wrong the first time. All right. So, like, in school... A lot of times you don't get second chance. Like the teacher is just like, you get a C. That's it. So you kind of got an F. No, okay. you know, because you got the first name right. So you got like a D. Okay. So now I'm going to give you a chance to get an A here. Bash Nagel for $30. <sighs> Bash Nagel. B A S H N E G L E. I don't know. Give me the money back. But you know what? Here's Bashnagel. How do we spell this one? B A S C H N A G E L. I That's why it's the hard question. I appreciate it though, Joe. Nice meeting you, man. Go White Sox. All right, thanks, man. All right, so Anders, we're going to play a little Sox trivia. Okay. You know? We're in the Sox parking lot, so I expect you to, to get this, right? All right. I, I want to give you some money. So we're going to start with a $10 question. You got to get this right. What CTA red line stop is closest to U.S. Cellular Field? So what is the closest red line stop to where we're at? What's, 30, it, what's it now? 35th Street. There you go. I'll, I'll accept that. All that's right. $10. <laughs> okay. okay. You ready? You wanna, you're, going, you're going for it all, right? Let's you're going to go going. for the 20s? Keep going. Okay. So both Jose Quintana and Chris Sale were born in 1989. Now, who is younger? They're both born in the same year. Who's younger? I'm going to go Chris Sale. There you go. That, that, that was a guess, though, right? Yeah. All right, so Chris was born March 30th. Jose was born in January 24th. Okay. Okay? So, you want to... Hey, we got another $100. Go for it. All right. You ready? Ready. I got a feeling you're going to get this. All right. I, I have a good feeling right now. <laughs> Who is the last starting pitcher to start in the All-Star game for the Sox? Which Sox starter was the last starting pitcher to go to the All-Star game? To start the All-Star game, excuse me. The last starting pitcher to start the All-Star game. Something makes me want to say Mark Burley, but I don't know if that's right. Is it right? <laughs> and you know what? Because that was your first guess, I'm going to give it to you. Uh, thank you because very much. Because that, that's, that's what was in your mind. <laughs> and it's also not my money I'm giving away. So yeah, Thank you. <laughs> you were right, though. Good job. Man. Thank you very right. much. Here's this. How long have you actually been a Blackhawks fan? Because here's the deal. A lot of people kind of jumped on the bandwagon. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of people 
kind of last five, six years. Oh, I'm a Hawks fan. I love the Hawks forever. Like 10 years ago, they'd never watched the game. They didn't have any Blackhawks gear. You know those people that run around with like all the Hawks gear now? Oh, yeah. Okay, are you one of those? No, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely not. I okay, should say. All right. See, this, you're this, nervous. This is like, I am nervous. I am uh, nervous. It, it's a big deal. You know that this this show is seen in like 50 countries around the world. 50 countries. Okay, yeah. I got millions you. of people watch this show, like all the time, especially in rain delays. Like rain delays, a lot of people watch this show. All right, okay. so you ready? I, Hawk I spelling bee. Hawk spelling bee. I'm so, a terrible speller. Okay. Here's the deal. You can either start there. There's two ways to do this. Okay. You can start, there's a $10 question you can start with, so it's a little bit of an easier name, or a $20 question that's a little bit harder. Now, if you get those, one of those right, you pick one, either the easy one or the hard one. If you get that right, you can go on to the $30 question. So, do you want to start with the $10 name? If you get that right, then you go straight to the $30 yeah. question. So, you got a chance to either win like $40 or $50 if you get, them, if you get both questions right. So, where do you want to begin here? The easy name? Sure, sure. We'll so the $10. Easy, okay. Yeah, we'll start with the easy name. So you've been, a, you've been a fan for a while. Yeah. Ron, you got to spell first and last name. Ron Maki. Maki. Ron, oh you can spell my like, God. Let's, get, let's start with Ron first. Let's go with Ron. Ron, R O N. Okay, now let's think for a minute. She got it? No, got hold Ron. on. Hold on. She got the first name Ron. Ron. So, all right. So, actually, here, you know what? There's a. Uh, there's a restaurant called Sushi Maki. You ever heard of it? Uh, no. Okay, because I was gonna say it's spelled the same way, but apparently it's, this isn't gonna help. Okay, so Ron Maki. Let's let's go. Let's think about Maki for a minute. I I, I have it in my head. I'm, we, we can, can we agree that it's gonna start with an M? It's gonna start with an M. Okay, we got that down. Now, what do we think is gonna come after the M? An A. Okay, so we're two letters in. How many letters do you think are left? In the name. Three. You think there are three letters I left think in the name? Three letters left. Sure. Yes. So we're gonna go M A, and then you still think there are three letters left? Yes. Am I wrong? I can't really tell you, but I probably wouldn't drag it out this long if you were right. Okay, so then we're gonna go with two letters. Okay, I like that better. So we're gonna go Ron Maki M A. K. Let's stop right there. See? It takes a little time. Okay. I'm a pretty, it's like being in class. Like sometimes you just gotta think through it. You don't wanna rush. All right, let's, there's $10. So, all right, so let's, let's just hold on to that. So here's the deal. Let's, let's do this. So now you're gonna go to our bonus question. It's a $30 question. $30 question. All right. You might have to think about this a little bit longer. Okay. Ed Litzenberger. Ed, Litzenberger. Ed. Hold on, don't panic. See, you oh went into panic God, mode. Hold on. Ed, let's go with Ed first. Ed. E.D. Okay, again, good e start. Litzenberger. Litzen if you think about it, Litzenberger. Okay. I mean, it, Litzenberger. Just Litzenberger. slowly. Let's go through this. Litzenberger. So we got an L and I. Okay. T. Okay. All right, L I T. Mm -hmm. Litzen. Yep. Zin. So Z E N. Okay, you're good. B U R. <laughs> it's probably not spelled like a hamburger, though, right? So it's Litzen Burger. Litzen Burger. So can I go back? So not be like a hamburger. Ed, and, Ed and go. Litzen Burger. B E R G E R. Give it to me again. L I T. Yep. Let's Z E N. Yep. B E R G E R. There you go. <laughs> see? <laughs> High five. All that pressure. You see how much pressure you put on yourself? Yeah, I'm thinking about food though. So I'm like, oh, you know, burger. So Litz and Burger, you thought like hamburger? I did, I did. I was thinking that, but I was like, wait okay. a second. I shouldn't go do, there. Do you want the, your $30? Sure. Okay, yeah, I want so $30. Hold this. 10, 20, 30. There you go. Thanks for watching Beer Money presented by Coors Light. Remember, you can always follow us on Twitter at CSN Beer Money. Hanging out with my fans, but that does it for us. We will see you next time.
It's a whole new ball game with MLB Extra Innings on DirecTV. It is magic. Experience the ultimate season ticket now at a new lower price. Unbelievable. Every punch out, every rundown, what a play. and every walk off. Whoa. All at your fingertips. And with MLB.TV included, you can watch nearly 100 live games a week on over 400 supported devices. Don't miss a minute of the action. Follow your favorite team on any screen with MLB Extra Innings on DirecTV. Order now. Time has come today at Berwyn Kia. Now's the time to save. For a very limited time, Berwyn Kia announces triple time savings. Drive a brand new Kia Forte, Kia Soul, or Kia Rio. Your choice. Only $12,795 or $149 per month. And bad credit is no problem because we own the bank. We look at your future, not your past. Time to get approved. Berwyn Kia on Harlem and Ogden, just north of I-55 or BerwynKia.com. Now join the following program already in progress. AT&T introduces a buy one, get one offer that sounds really good. And looks good. Thanks. Nice job on the typesetting, guys. <laughs> yes. Anyway, come in and take advantage of this offer. Huh? It's a great offer. What? Buy one, get one free. Yeah, this must goes downtown. Let's just go back to the graphics. Right now at AT&T, buy a Samsung Galaxy S7 and get one free. In Depth with Graham Bensinger is brought to you by AT&T. AT&T, mobilizing your world. You know, we're up there and the flaps won't go down. Don't worry, boys, that was me in my back pocket. So that's my phone. Everybody, <laughs> that's my phone. Whenever you're doing an interview, always turn your phone off. Yes, the inevitable cell phone, always our worst nightmare on these tapings, guys. Uh, welcome back to our in-depth best of show. And Laura, we traveled just outside of Jupiter, Florida to sit down with Greg Norman. Yeah, the shark. It's amazing what he's done for himself through while he was in golf and post-golf. But I was really impressed to see how candid he was with you with exactly what he had to sacrifice in order to become so successful. How difficult was it to be away from the f family like that? Well, it's a huge sacrifice. I mean, I traveled 35 to 40 weeks a year, every weekend. So you're gone from seeing your kids playing soccer or football or doing what they love to do. You're gone from their, their most important growth cycle in life. That's huge sacrifices. And uh, my life, I've paid the ultimate sacrifice, quite honestly. And um, Why do you say that? Well, because, you know, your family's not together. If I had to do all over again, I'd have to some, I would redo my schedule big time. You would? Oh, absolutely. So he says he would do it all over again, but he went on to say that now look at what his life where his daughter and his son and his son-in-law all work for him. So there is a little bit of a payoff by all he sacrificed earlier in life. What I found fascinating about him is he's had considerable financial success, but it's because he took less money up front on deals and instead took equity and bet on himself, right. and it really paid off, and yeah. that's pretty cool. It was a good business lesson for sure. Somebody else who was very candid with us was Bodie Miller, one of the most accomplished skiers ever, whose brother was in a motorcycle accident resulting in lifelong seizures. The medication for those seizures had such negative side effects, his brother didn't want to take it, and that ultimately led to his death. He opened up about the emotional toll of losing his brother. How hard was the grieving process on you? Um, the moment when we found out was, was the time that was really tough. That moment, I think, you know, obviously I wouldn't wish that on anybody, but um, was, was very um, unifying for, for the whole group because I think a lot of people felt like they became close to everyone else just because of their, how strong the emotion was and how, you know, how similar for each person. It just, you know, it was, 
again, you know, unfortunately, you're, you learn through those kind of challenges a lot of ways. I mean, I wouldn't want people to have to experience that stuff, but, you know, they are revealing. I mean, you do, you do recognize what you're capable of, and, you know, they reveal character when you're in those kind of moments. Bodie was a really smart, thoughtful guy. What was also interesting was just how into volleyball he is. His wife's a professional volleyball player. He even gave me some lessons out in his backyard after the interview. From south of L.A. to Cincinnati, where we had the chance to sit down with tennis's Caroline Wozniacki, Rick, who was very open about very. golfer Rory McIlroy breaking off his engagement with her. Yeah, I couldn't believe how open she was. She pretty much told us how it all went down. Take a look. How surprised were you by how it all ended. Oh, I was shocked. I thought at least, you know, I would get a face-to-face -face or something, but there was nothing, you know. It was just a um, phone call and I did not hear from him again, you know. It's kind of like that. It's kind of just ended and, you know, I don't think you expect yourself to be in a situation like that. You can't prepare yourself or your body for anything like that. So, you know, I think I was just in a bit of a shock phase there for a while and uh, I think you just have to take life as it goes and I believe that you know you never get put things on you that you can't handle so uh, you know I'm definitely on the other side now and you know I I moved on. I think it was good that she was able to have fun with a very personal part of her life and she went on to talk and have fun with us and told us about how she could wear high heels again on dates but uh, the best part of the show was this show from Graham. Take a look. As you're 24, <laughs> gorgeous, incredibly successful oh, and now single so what does uh, Caroline uh, look for in guys I look for someone who's honest uh, that's the most important thing who's fun to be around who doesn't take himself too seriously um, I would like a taller guy so I can wear my heels uh, so I'm out of contention <laughs> I don't know you're I'm single <laughs> so grand you're kind of hey, gorgeous I get an a for effort. you're single you're single you're such a great interviewer. Okay, so maybe it was a failed attempt. I will say this. It's a little creepy watching that back. And out of any interview we've ever done, I got more crap from people online in digital comments than... But you thought you had a shot at you dinner did. that night. You, you like, did. Oh, I think she was flirting back just a no, little bit. No, you didn't have a shot. Whatever. Coming up, the one stunt none of you guys wanted me to try. Nice folding. You deserve a raise. Thank you. Real sweet spinning out the spin cycle. You do deserve a raise in the form of a sweet Diet Dr. Pepper. Ooh, sip it. Mmm, that is sweet. These are my delicates. Tumble dry. Extra heat. I'll take these. He just folds. Isn't she great? How do you guys know? Real sweet going back in the spin cycle. Diet Dr. Pepper. It's the sweet one. Next time, save time with the online check-in app from Great Clips. No more waiting around because now we'll be waiting for you. Download our free app today. Great Clips, it's going to be great. Twelve bucks is all that's standing between you and a good time. Dine and drink, happening now. Pick your entree and pair it with a cocktail, wine, or beer for just twelve bucks. Dine and drink, only at Fridays. Looking sharp, Len. Who's the lucky lady? I'm going to the bank to discuss a mortgage. <sighs> See, you need a loan, you put on a suit, you go crawling to the bank. This is how I dress to get a mortgage. <laughs> I just go to Lending Tree. I calculate how much home I can afford. I get multiple offers to compare side by side. And the best part is, the banks come crawling to me. Everything you need to get a better mortgage. Clothing optional. Lending Tree. When banks compete, you win. Okay. Awkward. Uh, hello, Geico. Yeah, I was just talking about your emergency roadside service and how it's available 24-7 and then our car overheaters. But what are the chances? Can you send a tow truck, please? Uh, the location? You're not going to believe this, but it's, um, it's in a tree. I wish I was joking, mate, but it's literally stuck in a tree. A chainsaw? No, no. All we really need is a tow truck. Day or night, Geico's emergency roadside service is there for you. In Depth with Graham Bensinger is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com for a free rate quote.
Welcome back to the in-depth best of show and it's always fun when you can do more than just the interviews when on these episode shoots that was Tony Hawk Travis Pastrana the action sports legend I was really surprised by what we got to do his agent calls me a couple days before the interview and is like hey what if we put you on the front of Travis's motorcycle and have him do a backflip with you at the MGM arena in Vegas and I thought he was joking but he wasn't no I haven't crashed ever doing this with anyone on the front. Uh -huh. Is there a chance? Yes. I feel confident, but it's your call. I'm oh. game. All right, sounds good. You ready? You okay? Great. All right, good job, man, good job. Way to pull that off, man. That was awesome. That's the first. So that was the first time anyone had done that with him without practicing first in a foam pit. His girlfriend, now wife, didn't want you to do it. I didn't want you to do it. Your mom was in Vegas watching. She was a nervous wreck. She didn't want you to do it. My mom didn't want me to do it. She burst out crying after we landed the stunt because she thought I was going to get really hurt. I found out right before the interview that Travis's mom did a similar stunt with Travis's friend and she broke her neck. So there was legitimate chance that right. we were going to get uh, seriously hurt. Thankfully, that didn't, didn't happen, happen yeah. though. Another person we had abbreviated fun with was Charles Barkley, Rick. Oh yeah, Charles, you know, you don't have a skateboard, we didn't have a motorcycle. We tried to get a golf club, I think, Laura, and we couldn't get that, but we could find a trash can and some paper. And that was your idea. Yeah. Score, <laughs> you win some, you lose some, Graham. <laughs> I might have to use the. I want. I, oh, that's cheating. My aim is not good anymore, so I always try to bank it in. Oh. Oh. That's one for me. No. Oh. Wait. See, you probably do that? this. You probably do this that's all the time. Two for me. You probably one of those people who sit around. I have no. That's three for me. That's like. Oh. No, come on. You're like one of those guys who play foosball. Is that, is that foosball? That name of that Four game. Four for me. Are you or not what's trying? The, what's the last time you... Wait, I'm not trying. Wait, what... You, I got four, you got none. I ain't never played... I haven't touched a basketball I since got, I retired. I you probably got a bas basketball in yeah, sixth grade. You probably got a basketball court at home. I haven't touched a basketball since the day I retired. I, I think they can attest to the fact that I have zero athletic ability. Zero? I'm a worse golfer than you. Are you serious? <laughs> that was so, not a good Don't tell experience. me that. Don't tell me that. I beat Charles Barkley in basketball. Yes, you did. And you say on every shoot, I ha clearly have no athletic ability. You say it almost every time, but you did in that particular instance. And I was laughing because Charles was so nervous before the interview. Remember how I was having to like blot him with a towel because he was profusely sweating? Right. He'd been telling me for years that he would sit down with us for one of these tapings. He'd given me a cell phone number. And then every time I would ask him, he'd say he was unavailable. What I later learned was while he does media all the time, he hates doing right. interviews about himself, so he really avoids it at all costs. Yeah. From having fun with Charles Barkley playing basketball to a guy who told some really funny stories, Pete Rose. Pete Rose, incredibly funny stories. Story about him and Joe DiMaggio traveling to Vietnam to entertain the troops, and it's a story about <laughs> Pete and Joe with the shower. <laughs> I understand you also had the dubious honor of uh, showering Joe DiMaggio. Oh, yeah, I gave him a shower one night. So I saw everything Marilyn saw. <laughs> and you told all your friends about it? I told every, every one of my friends. I said the best way to describe Joe DiMaggio is a penis with a man hanging from it. <laughs> <laughs> Enough said. What else could we say? That was TV gold, for sure. <laughs> and that's it. Uh, that wraps up another season of the show, guys. For Rick Hensel, Sandy Mendelson, Laura Susick, I'm Graham Bensinger. Thanks for watching In Depth. Yeah, but that, I thought we, the space was not. Get it right. Don't you think? Yeah. Yep. 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 <laughs> Photography, Rick Hensel, an audio technician. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, people literally. Little, uh, I mean, people literally. It's one of those things where people can literally. I can't say literally. You just did. I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm, I refuse to do this show anymore. <laughs>
you'll save 11% on all of it, so you can finish your latest project and start planning the next big thing. Get building with an 11% rebate on everything, even sale prices, now at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Welcome back to Sports Center. I'm Scott Van Pelt. Time now for the best available video, which comes to us tonight from. The future of boating is now, and it's only available from Yamaha, the number one brand on the water. See your local Yamaha watercraft dealer. Dan, a couple NFL quarterbacks are having some fun in the offseason. Cam Newton has his own show on Nickelodeon that just premiered all in with Cam Newton. My kids love Cam. They don't even know he plays football, and they love the show. <laughs> now, Ben Roethlisberger last night uh, had a cameo appearance on the show The Bachelor, The Bachelorette. This young lady is The Bachelorette. And uh, Ben, a couple, Heinz Ward, Kiesel, they did this bit. Now, I'm going to put you guys to the test. You got a phone call today, and you could either have a cameo on The Bachelorette or a cameo on a Nickelodeon show. Which would you choose and why? Uh, a Nickelodeon show. But you don't have young kids. Yeah, but I'd have to look myself in the mirror after being on The Bachelorette, <laughs> and that would be pretty tough. I'd be ashamed. And that is true love. I mean, that's where you're going to find true well, love. Well, they're really there looking for love. Yeah, and I love. and I would I would love to do that. So if I wasn't saying, married, I'd try to find it. You're saying the shows on Nickelodeon are more realistic yes, than The Yes, they are. Yes, they are. <laughs> yes, they're they're less scripted. Because you know what, 25-year-old Harry, he's exhausted all of his options at this point, and he's just so frustrated he can't find love. <laughs> Poor so guy with a six-pack, beautiful face, teeth, hair. You know, he... it's just so hard. It's just so hard to date right now. He doesn't want to and... be discovered for commercials or movies or TV opportunities. It's all about just finding that right. That's, that's where you find love. Today, on this episode of The Breakfast Club with The Dan Patrick Show. I'm going to have a large pepperoni pizza I like it. at about 7, 8 o'clock. Yeah, that's no, healthy. Here on the DP Show, food is always the topic of choice. Eat a minimum of six slices of pizza. Yes. The equivalent of the two hot dogs and two hamburger barbecue. I like it. An art form only the Danettes can perfect. Cheese doodles. Yeah, I like that. And then like chocolate cake. I love it. And a couple of scoops of ice cream. No, it's... And the whipped cream, the ready whip. Yeah. When it comes to diet and fitness, Fritzy is second to none. So I've got gastrointestinal issues, and that's all the more reason to be smart. Now that we have that out of the way, what's next on the menu? Turkey omelet, salad with grilled chicken, chipwich, ice cream sandwich, tacos, a bag of almonds, fish sticks, grilled chicken breast, egg white omelet, 10 wings well done, steak on the grill with corn on the cob, half a bagel with cream cheese, two hot dogs and two hamburgers. <laughs> Summertime is here, and you know, you want to be slim or slimmer and ripped. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of The Breakfast Club with The Dan Patrick Show. Welcome to The Dan Patrick Show. Akeem Tlaib released from the hospital, and he said he was too drunk. This is the Broncos defensive back. He's not sure if he shot himself. That's really drunk. Akeem, we've all been there. Leaving your debit card at the bar. Yeah. It's like, that's all right, you've had a couple. Yeah. Let me see. What happened last Oh, God. Oh, that's right. I got shot. Okay, maybe I haven't quite been there, but I was drunk yesterday. I knew it. And I forgot much of what was said on the show. Website is danpatrick.com. So I went to danpatrick.com, where all the podcasts are available. Problem solved. Dan Patrick. It's LeBron's team. Like, we got to stop with excuses here. Oh, LeBron doesn't have the bench Golden State has. Who the hell picked the team? You got Kevin Love. You recruited Kevin Love. You knew you were going to Cleveland with Kyrie Irving. Cleveland just got to start to act like they're the best team or one of the best teams in the NBA. If you don't get results in Cleveland, that roster will not be the same next year. No. Here he is, joined by the four Danettes. 
It's Dan Patrick. Welcome to the program. It's hour one on this Wednesday. Dan and the Dan at Dan Patrick Show. Charles Barkley stops by. Shaquille O'Neal stops by. Your involvement also encouraged. 877 3DP Show. Email address dp at danpatrick.com. Good morning to our radio and TV partners. A lot of topics to get to. Warriors Cavs game three tonight. Yes, do or die. Do or die on a variety of levels. Do or die this year. Do or die perhaps in the offseason. Maybe dying in the offseason. And will there be some players who won't be on this roster with Cleveland next season? Will it be a sweep? Could it maybe go six games? Magic Johnson weighs in on his Lakers versus the Warriors. Made an appearance on first take. We'll have that uh, comment from Magic Johnson. You know, all athletes believe their team would beat somebody else. I mean, Scotty Pippen at the Final Four said, yeah, we would sweep the Golden State Warriors. Now, there's no way that you can ever simulate something and say, all right, what styles are we playing? The 80s? The 90s? We playing now? The difference in playing now as opposed to the 80s, 90s? So it's fun. It's a, it's a fun barroom argument there. But Magic Johnson did comment on it. We'll have that for you uh, coming up a little bit here. The refs want the NBA to ease up on the nightly reports. You know, that transparency stuff. Uh, I've talked about it a bit. Uh, if you're going to be transparent, shouldn't you be totally transparent? Why just the final two minutes? How about if you have an egregious call in the first four minutes? What if it's a terrible call on Steph Curry and he picks up his third? That affects the game greatly. You could have a call that affects the game in the first quarter. Maybe not as much as the fourth quarter, final two minutes, but the commissioner talks about total transparency. Uh, I, f I feel bad for the officials because they're saying, you know, we, we do 46 minutes. And then it's the final two minutes, and now you're going to rat on us. You're going to say, all right, you made a mistake. I understand the NBA goes, we want to let people know if we missed a call. Okay, but, but it doesn't change anything. Who, who's benefiting from this? Wow, look at us. We told you we missed a call. Now, are you grading the officials so we know that these calls, now is there extra emphasis on the final two minutes with these calls? What about the first 46 minutes? How are... Tell us what matters here. What, what is the end game here? We're being totally... No, you're not being totally transparent. You're sort of transparent in the final two minutes of the game. Do the officials get suspended? Is there a point system here? Hey, they missed a couple of calls. Hey, because of the calls they missed, they're not going to be officiating the finals? Here was a quote by the union. The union for the officials. Efforts to promote transparency have encouraged the idea that perfection in officiating is possible. Perfection is neither possible nor desirable. If every possible infraction were to be called, the game would be unwatchable and would cease to exist as a form of entertainment in this country. I'm going to go back and read a portion of that sentence. If every possible infraction were to be called... So they pick and choose what they want to call. That's transparency. You're telling me that you can call an infraction all the time. But you can't call all the infractions. So how do you choose? What do you choose to call? Now there's a little bit of transparency in there. But I don't know if there's a great end game here for anybody. You know, would I like to have the officials talk after a game and say, you know what? We saw this, we reacted this way. Okay, let me, involve, let me be involved in the process. You know, the NFL doesn't have to do this. I, sometimes they'll let a, a pool reporter in and get a comment from somebody. But the NFL is 16 games. There's far more at stake when you have a 16-game regular season and something that ends, you know, a, a dramatic play. I get that. But don't tell me it's transparency. When it's not, it's sort of transparency. There's a difference in that. All right, uh, Magic Johnson sounds off on his Showtime Lakers. We'll have that for you coming up. This is the Dan Patrick Show. If you are somebody who no needs legal assistance, I'm here to help. Because at Aiken Law, every injury is personal.
injury law? The choice is simple. Ankin, 3126 million. Twelve bucks is all that's standing between you and a good time. Dine and drink. Happening now. Pick your entree and pair it with a cocktail, wine, or beer for just twelve bucks. Dine and drink. Only at Fridays. One day, a rider made a decision. I'm ready for the decision to ride on and save money. He decided to save money by switching his motorcycle insurance to GEICO. There's no shame in saving money. Ride on. Ride proud. GEICO Motorcycle. Great rates for great rides. Meet John, Allison, and Kevin. John is a traveler, so he shopped for his airline rewards credit card at LendingTree.com. Allison is a shopper, so she loves the cash back credit card she found at LendingTree.com. And Kevin had a fun year, maybe too fun, so he shopped for his credit card at LendingTree.com. Rewards are better than we've seen in years. What kind of credit card personality do you have? Come find your perfect card, all in two minutes, all for free. LendingTree. When banks compete, you win. This program on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you by Weber's Sauces and Seasonings. For the best grilled taste, go to the expert Weber's Sauces and Seasonings. Call grilling flavor up to the bigs. The uh, magic reacting to, uh, well, it was actually brought up on the podium after game two. Draymond Green was like, yeah, I don't think we're not as good as uh, Showtime Lakers. And then Clay Thompson jumps in because his dad played for the Showtime Lakers. He goes, yeah, we're better than them. So then Magic Johnson was on first take on the mothership and had this to say about his Lakers versus these Warriors. The Warriors would have bad matchups against us. There's no way that they're going to deal with Kareem, and there's no way they can deal with James Worthy. And the thing that we can do that that will affect them and cause them problems is that we could set up and we could run on the fast break. Stephen A., we average 118 points with hand checking, with all of that. But my Lakers, our will to win, our knowledge of the game, also how smart we were at the game. See, we're going to take something away. We're not going to give Golden State everything that they do now because we were too smart. Pat Riley was a master at coming up with a game plan to go up against everybody we went against in the finals or in the playoffs. And one thing we were great at, executing on that game plan. It's Magic Johnson on first take yesterday. I expect Magic Johnson to be territorial, defensive. The only surprising part is Michael Thompson actually agreed with his son. I guess son comes before team. But Michael Thompson said, yeah, you know, we haven't seen shooters like that. We wouldn't be able to match up against them. Yeah, Paul. So we have no loyalty here. We have no loyalty to either team. Is Magic right? You've seen both. You saw the Lake, every bit of those Lakers. Okay, I'm going to take the Bulls over any of these teams. Really? Yes. Because, Even the best Lakers? Uh, I, I would take the Bulls. Begrudgingly, I, I would take the Bulls. But the Bulls against Golden State is a better matchup for the Bulls because I, I like my perimeter defense against a team that their success is predicated on their perimeter offense. So I like that. And they took great pride in playing defense. So you had two of the greatest two-way players of all time in Jordan and Pippen. I got, you know, Rodman, who is more athletic than Draymond Green defensively. So I, I have some guys who I feel pretty good going into battle with. Horace Grant, they, the guys who play defense. So I, I like the Bulls against Golden State. Uh, the Celtics uh, in, in the mid-'80s with Bird, McHale, and Parrish. So you got a Hall of Fame front line. Now, they could run, but the Celtics in their style, what style would they try to play? I got Dennis Johnson, who was one of the great defensive guards and a Hall of Famer. Um, and I got Danny Ainge as the other guard. Now, that's an advantage, obviously, for Golden State. But down low, Andrew Bogut against any of those guys? Who, who's guarding, you know, Parrish? Who's guarding Bird? Is, is Andre Iguodala or Sean Livingston going to guard Bird? So I, I like the Celtics, and I like the Bulls. 
the Lakers, while you can't guard them, I don't know if they're guarding you. Like, who's Magic? Who, is, is Magic then going to guard Draymond Green? Like, Kareem against Bogut. Now I got Michael Cooper, Byron Scott on the two guards there. I mean, it's a fun, it's fun. It's a fun argument. But it's different styles and it's different brands of basketball. What you could get away with, what you can get away with now? Watch an old NBA game and you got somebody giving you a forearm in the back or they're holding you with their hand, they're hand checking you. And the physicality, there was no such thing as a flagrant foul. You had playoff fouls back then. We didn't invent the flagrant foul. Can you imagine the number of flagrant fouls that would have been committed on Jordan? But it's a fun argument. Yes, McLevin. Kareem was not a young man with the Showtime Lakers. I think that would, in my head, that's a problem. He was 35, 36, 38, 40. No, I think he was 34. So, the, like, the prime, what's the best Laker team? Like, when Thompson was there, Kareem was already 39. Okay. I, I just feel like Kareem at that point was slower. But he still had the one shot, one move in the history of the NBA that was never stopped, never defended. Who, yeah, but is that really going to bury the Warriors? I, I don't. All I know is I can throw it into Kareem, and he's got Andrew Bogut on him. I like I like my uh, my Kareem in that situation there just a little bit, but it would be fun. But I do like the Bulls against Golden State. I think Jordan would relish that matchup. I think him and Pippen would just say, "Bring it on!" I can't I can't wait. Now let let's they, they would want to do it now, knowing knowing Jordan there. But it's fun. It's it. You know, it's not a winnable argument. Unanswerable. It's just a great discussion. Barkley will join us coming up. I'm sure Charles will have a comment or two. And Shaquille O'Neal. I think we finally got to that story. Do you remember when Mike Brown was the Cavaliers head coach? And I said, can you tell me your favorite Shaquille O'Neal story? And he said, I can't do it now on the radio. But I think it had to do with nudity with Shaquille O'Neal. I think what Shaq would do is what he did with the Lakers. He would put on his shoes, tennis shoes, and then he would run out onto the court in practice, and he would hug his teammates while he was naked. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Phil Jackson brought that, com brought that up when uh, he and Shaq were answering questions uh, in New York City, that, uh, I think, over the weekend that Shaq would do that. That's a morale boost. Take a break. This is the Dan Patrick Show. Hi, this is Ben Zobrist, and you're watching the home of Cubs baseball, CSN Chicago, presented by State Farm. Measure twice, cut once, and save for a long, long time. Get to Schaumburg Honda Automobiles for a deal that really measures up. Lease a 2016 Honda Accord LX sedan for only $199 a month or a Civic LX sedan for just $179 a month. Bob Rorman. Bob Rorman, Schaumburg Honda Automobiles, just eight blocks west of the Woodfield Mall on Golf Road in Schaumburg. This is how you look when you shop at DXL. But this is how you'll feel. All the brands you love, waist size 38 and up, all in one awesome store. DXL, you're looking good. Sports Talk Live, presented by the all-new Chevy Silverado, weeknights at 5.30. Now playing on DirecTV Cinema. Set has taken over Egypt. Bow before me or die. So how do we stop him? With vengeance. Movies start at Channel 125. Tired of food sticking to the pan? You try to scrape it, and then you scratch it. You may as well trash it. 
Not anymore. Hi, Chef Daniel Green here with Gotham Steel, the newest technology in non-stick cookware made with ceramic and super strong titanium. Stronger than ever before. It's like cooking on air. Everything slides right off and it's dishwasher safe. Watch, you'd never whisk eggs in a non-stick pan, right? Well, you can with my pan. Use metal and never make a scratch ever. No sticking and no scratches. It's amazing. Look, burnt cheese is a frying pan disaster. Not with my pan. Shredded Parmesan, right on the heat. Plus, use Gotham Steel in the oven to up to 500 degrees. Even fire won't damage Gotham Steel. Call now to get your Gotham Steel pan with titanium and ceramic for $19.99. Here's how to order. To order, call 1-800-282-0278. That's 1-800-282-0278. Or order online at GothamSteel.com. I read a lot of tributes to Muhammad Ali and, you know, realizing what Ali meant to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and in Time magazine, if you get a chance, I, I thought that it was just eloquently written and probably uh, joyful and painful at the same time for Kareem. But he really paid tribute to Muhammad Ali and got to spend time with him. I thought it was uh, really well done. And Kareem, kind enough to join us. Good morning, Kareem. Thanks for joining us. Oh, no, no problem, Dan. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Uh, I, I'll drag you into best team of all time in Showtime versus Golden State. But let me ask you about Muhammad Ali. What was it that made you two click? Well, just, uh, you know, I, it started, uh, I started admiring him when I was in high school. Um, well, really, uh, when I was still in grade school, the, the 1960 Olympics, I, I thought he was really neat. And um, then from that point on, uh, his professional career really uh, made me a fan. I really enjoyed the, the way he would go to the uh, his opponents' camps and, and taunt them and, and harass them and get them all angry and crazy. <laughs> he was already getting into their heads, and then he got into the ring and, and embarrassed them. He was uh, an incredible athlete. And then uh, the stances that he took uh, with regard to uh, human rights and civil rights, uh, it was a very... Uh, very uh, tumultuous time in, in terms of civil rights, uh, the final uh, couple of years of the civil rights movement. And he had a lot to say that was uh, very accurate and to the point, and uh, he made us all proud. You embraced some of Ali politically, but not the bravado. Was there any part of you that said, you know, maybe I could be this, or would I like to be that? Could I be that braggadocious or charismatic, or however you want to, uh, <laughs> you know, kind of <laughs> capture Ali? Was there any thought of that well you know there, there's a certain um there's a certain kingdom that you inherit when you're the world heavyweight boxing champion and uh, you know i i never aspired to to be that i didn't think i could be that but uh, what he had to say about uh, sticking up for our human and uh, political rights uh, was right on the money and i totally agreed with it and uh, i had a lot of respect for him because of that did you ever get in the ring with him? No, 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 no. Will did that. Will wanted to wanted to box Ali. He was, I, I guess, he was dreaming or, you know, in some way deluding himself into thinking he could he could fight Ali. Uh, I didn't. I, I I saw him as as my friend and my brother. And I I didn't want to fight him. I I figured I'd let him do that, and I, I'd take care of the basketball end of it. You know. I'm talking to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar joining us. Uh, we were discussing this. Uh, well, it was actually brought up by Draymond Green and Clay Thompson, where Clay said, yeah, we would be better than the Showtime Lakers. And, of course, his dad played on that team. So we've been discussing it. And, and if you use today's rules, you know, today's style, uh, the use of the three, how do you think, and, and can you remove yourself as an analyst, though, instead of a, a player on that Showtime Laker team, and look at this objectively. How would how would that game play out? Uh, I, I, you really have to uh, go out and play the game with the players to, to find out what is what. I think um, the Showtime team had guys on that team who could could defend on the perimeter. Uh, guys don't go to college now. They don't learn how to play defense uh, out away from the basket. It's, only, it's an offensive game now. They want to see more scoring, so they eliminated hand checking so now you can't it's, it's very hard to guard people uh, away from the basket so i think that uh, that difference in, in the way that the game is played really has uh, um, changed 
the dynamic, and there's really no way to, to compare them. Um, they're a very talented team, and uh, they would be a, a great team in, in any era. But uh, if they played in our era, suppose, suppose they played in, in an era where um, there was no three-point shot. Do they think they would win at that point? That's an interesting question. They wouldn't win without a three-point shot. I think that, that that weapon is, you know, what separates them from all these teams now. But if we're playing rules in the 80s or the 90s, then I like those teams. I don't, I don't like Golden State. I think the, the, the style, the physicality would be completely different. And I think that would be, you know, work against the Warriors. Yeah, and especially the, the fact that they don't have any size. You know, they, they play this, you know, what do they call it, small ball? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Size really matters on the court. Uh, even in an era like now with, with small ball, uh, if you have somebody who can score inside, uh, that creates serious problems for the defense. So imagine if Shaq was playing against the Golden State. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think they could do anything with him. Yeah, we haven't even factored in Shaq and Kobe's Lakers against uh, Golden State. You would take them over them as well. Uh, I think that they would. Uh, it would be competitive, and, and Kobe could shoot the uh, long range jumper um, with uh, a lot of uh, accuracy and um, uh, efficiency so you know that that would uh, that that would change it i think and uh, you can't find out unless you put the teams on the court and let them go at it you know so we're just going to argue about this this is why they have sports bars, Dan. That's true. You know, in, you, know, you order some wings and a brew, and then you start arguing. You know? How different would your game be today with the style? If you were coming out of college now, would, would you be shooting threes? Um, I might have to, uh, given the style of play that, that the coach dictated. But uh, I was very effective in, in the paint. I, but, uh, I shot something like 56 percent lifetime that's pretty good um you know that that would have earned me uh, a, a few shots in the paint here uh, i have you with one three-pointer in your career that's it you remember yes. you remember uh, i remember it vividly it in phoenix yes i mean it's, and it was from the short you know right there in the corner there i I ran out into the corner to, to get a rebound. Nobody came to guard me. <laughs> so I stepped back. I said, what the hell? I'll, I'll shoot a, a three-pointer, and I made it. That was it. That was it for me. Kareem, you look like a ladder unfolding when you're taking that shot from the corner here. Well, you got to see, but it, it went in real nice. It rattled <laughs> a little bit, but it was, it was down, you know? Uh, I didn't... Thanks for joining us on short notice, and uh, I really, really enjoyed the Time Magazine comments uh, about Muhammad Ali. Uh, you know what? It, it's uh, I, I know what he meant to you, and it certainly came across. So thank you. Yeah, he was he was an incredible human being, and and we're gonna miss him. Thank you, Kareem. You're welcome, Dan. Take care. That's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Lakers NBA Hall of Famer. This program on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you by ATI Physical Therapy. Taking physical therapy to a higher level. Ask your doctor about ATI Physical Therapy. Insurance does homeowners insurance a smarter way, which saves money. They offer a DIY home inspection, which you do yourself, which saves money. They offer a single deductible, so you don't pay twice when something like this happens, which saves money. They make it easy to bundle home and auto, which reduces red tape, which saves money. And they offer claim forgiveness, so if you make a claim, you could save money. Esurance was born online and built to save. And when they save, you save. That's home and auto insurance for the modern world. Esurance, an Allstate company. Click or call. This is a chick car. This is a short man's car. This is a cute car. Slow car. This is a single young professional's car. This car has no street cred. This car ain't hip hop. Kidless. Cute. Small. This car doesn't care what you call it.
Now, you can get two Arby's Ultimate BLTs for $6. So, with 10 total strips of thick-cut bacon, that works out to about a 100% chance of you coming to Arby's. Arby's, we have the meat. There are a lot of great things about this nation. The freedom, the pride, the people. But let's remember how we got here. By breaking the rules, by being rebellious. Yeah, we gave a finger to the British and said, we'll take it from here. Thank you very much. Turns out we're still doing that today. July 4th weekend, live from Daytona, NASCAR returns to NBC. We'll take it from here. great guests on today all time basically three american sporting legends on one show and i hope like i always say we shouldn't take this stuff for granted what we do here on the show today we have charles barkley who he's not one of your favorite personalities or athletes i don't know what you're thinking kareem abdul jabbar <coughs> one of the top five basketball players ever walked the earth Keel o'neill who's also in the conversation and also three different characters i mean um Guys who bring something when they do an interview, they never give us pat answers. That's the most important thing. You could have big name guests on. We've had lots of big name guests on who've said nothing in the past. And um, <coughs> excuse me, Barkley always says something. Cream now, Cream is soft spoken, but always gives you something. Shaq also kind of that soft spoken voice, but Shaq will tell you something. If you ask him a question, he'll tell you the truth. He's told us some truths that made headlines. So, <coughs> sorry, when you have three guests like that. It's, uh, it's like a layup drill, but you got to go after it, too, to make sure you take advantage of having them on. Because you don't get cream every day when you check. In a good, clean salad, every ingredient is the main ingredient. The new green goddess cob with avocado, bacon, freshly made dressing, tomato... What was that? And chicken. At Panera, food as it should be. Baseball fans, find out when your favorite Chicago team is playing this year by stopping by your local discount tire store and picking up a pocket schedule. To locate a discount tire store near you, visit discounttire.com. The best things in life are free. Choose excitement. But you can give them to Choose the action. Choose Hollywood casinos and you've already won. Two Chicago land locations with more of the games you want, more of the generous rewards you deserve, and celebrations that shine all night. That's the kind of star power that can take you places. Hollywood Casino Aurora and Joliet. There's no place like Hollywood. Get great customer service, outstanding selection, and fantastic deals at Oak Brook Toyota. Now I know you can dig that. Lease a brand new 2016 Toyota Corolla with zero down payment, zero first payment, zero security deposit, zero do it inception, and only $1.99 a month. Bob Roarman. Bob Roarman's Oak Brook Toyota and Westmont, only five minutes west of the tri state on Ogden Avenue. My experience with USAA is awesome. Homeowners insurance, life insurance, automobile insurance. I spent 20 years active duty. They still refer to me as gunnery sergeant when I call. Being a USA member because of my service in the military, to pass that on to my kids, something that makes me happy. My name is Roger Zapata and I'm a USA member for life. USAA, we know what it means to serve. Get an insurance quote and see why 92% of our members plan to stay for life. 
table on the day's hottest topics. Extremely important for us to get as many wins as we can, as early as we can, to put ourselves in a good position through the summer. Interview Chicago's biggest stars. I was able to mix it up with, with David back there. The mindset was to finish the deal, continue to let the defense work, and then try and finish the job. And interacts with you at home. Sports Talk Live, presented by Chevy Silverado. Next on Comcast Sportsnet. Update the poll results before we bring in Charles Barkley there, McLovin. Who would you take in a seven-game series with Jordan's Bulls, Curry's Warriors, Bird's Celtics, or Magic's Lakers? 60% say the Bulls, Showtime Lakers second. All right, let's bring in Charles Barkley. Do you like this argument, Chuck? I don't think it's that big of a deal. I mean, I think uh, out of all those teams you named, the Warriors are probably would come in fourth place. I mean, they got a very, very good team. Don't get me wrong, but... Listen, the, the best four teams I played against were Bull, uh, Bird, Celtics, Magic Lakers, one, one and one A, and Michael's Bulls were three. Uh, but that's not listen, and it ain't old guys hating on young guys. You know, listen, this team almost lost to Oklahoma City. You think any of those teams would lose to Oklahoma City or be down three one? Hell no. If you play by today's rules, though, with uh, you're not allowed to put your hands on anybody and the three-point shot, does is that the great equalizer here it, with the you know the the Warriors now against these other teams? Well, I think that Michael Jordan and Scott it, it would be all right if you couldn't touch him. Uh, as great as Michael's Bulls were with Michael, Dennis Rodman, Scottie Pippen, Ron Harper, Tony Kukoc, which they would be great today. I still don't think they were as good as Bird, Celtics, and uh, Magic's Lakers. All right, if you're, we're looking at the end result here, Golden State, if they go back-to-back, -back, they're going to be one of the great teams of all time. But what happens to Cleveland if Cleveland loses? What do we – do you see things changing on the roster with LeBron? Yeah, they got a good team. They just uh, – listen, they got a good team. They just playing against a team maybe I, – and I haven't this, – listen, this series not over yet. Everybody's wrote this series, this series off. Let's see what happened in the next couple of games before we had the war for championship. I mean, you got we made this mistake last series when we handed the series to Oklahoma City when they blew out the Warriors in games three and four. Mm -hmm. So let's see how this series plays out. You know, the thing is going to be funny. You know, the BS of the media, as I call it. I told one of my friends who we were drinking wine last week, I said, you know, the, the fans are so stupid. But they don't get the trick of sports. I say after this series, it's going to be A or B. The Warriors were overrated, or LeBron loses again in the finals. They're never going to give anybody credit. We have to blame somebody. Uh, but that that's what's just going to be the funny thing. With the, 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 I call it the BS of sports. I mean, the, the fans are so stupid. They don't want to understand the tricks of how sports works. I think, like I said, it's going to be A or B. The Warriors are overrated, or LeBron loses again in the finals instead of giving one of these teams credit. I commended you when uh, Game 6 Oklahoma City at halftime. You said what needed to be said about Kevin Durant, but this is what makes you great, is, you know what, I think uh, Ernie and Shaq and Kenny were kind of dancing around Kevin Durant's performance, and you said, no, he's terrible. He's playing that selfish hero ball, and, uh, you know, I wanted to say it to you personally. I, th I thought it was, you said what needed to be said, and it didn't take you long to get to the point. Well, Dan, I think you you know me. I'm not always going to be fair. I'm always going to be honest. I think that's why people, some people like me and some people hate me. But they know I don't play favorites. I don't play favorites at all. I think that's one of the reasons I don't like reporters, because they play favorites. Now, our job is to be fair. The people deserve a fair opinion. Kevin Durant's a hell of a player. And the thing that frustrated me the most about that series was they beat the Spurs, and they go up. 3-1 on the Warriors playing great team basketball. And then all of a sudden, they want to be the guy who get carried off it with the, get carried off on their shoulders. You know, if you go back and look, they were one of the worst teams assist-wise in the NBA during the regular season. In the postseason, they were one of the better teams. And they got them to the conference finals and up 3-1. And then all of a sudden, you know, Dan, I tell people all the time, Michael Jordan, is, he didn't make every big shot. I mean, Paxson made the, the three-pointer to beat us in the finals. Steve Kerr made some big shots against the Jazz. I mean, the great player don't always have to make the last shot. And, uh, you know, when we lost to the Rockets in game seven, Mario Ellie 
made the shot to sit them to the finals. Yeah. And I think that but the best team in the NBA, let's let's face it, it's the Oklahoma City Thunder. Nobody has more talent than those guys. But they reverted back to hero ball and it cost them the championship because they got a better team than the Warriors and the and the Cavaliers. But they don't uh, they don't pass the ball enough to each other. They don't trust the other guys. Yeah. And they're gonna regret blowing that three one league because depending on what happens with Kevin and Russell the next couple of years, they could have had a nice little window where they could have won several championships. Uh, before I let you go, how much did Muhammad Ali mold your personality, or am I? Is it a reach for me to? connect the two i did think of you when we looked at all of those old clips with ali not that you were that kind of showman when you were playing like you weren't guaranteeing wins and calling out jordan and those kind of things but i think now as an analyst i see a little bit more of muhammad ali's frankness well dan uh, i think people close to me i got a real nice text from kenny i think muhammad ali is the most important person in, in my life as far as trying to, when you get to be who I am, I want to always stand up for poor people. And that's my number one objective, to speak out on social issues. And he's always been the most important, significant person uh, in my life. And every time I got a chance to see him, I told him that. You know, I never want to just be rich and famous. I got lucky to be able to play basketball. And I, I, I do, man. It, uh, it, it hurt me. Uh, it hurt me a lot. You know, I always tell people my role models are Muhammad Ali, Dr. Martin Luther King, and Bill Russell. And all of them, you know, I never talk about black and white because there are just as many white people out there struggling like black people. There's always been white people in the civil rights struggle. Uh, but, man, it, it hurt me probably since my grandmother, who's the probably the second most, the most important person in my life, uh, it just hurt me, and I was fortunate enough that I got a chance to tell Muhammad uh, several times how much he meant to me, and it just it was just hard. It was hard. Even though I knew the end was coming, it still hurt. Always great catching up with uh, you, Chuck, and uh, I appreciate the Muhammad Ali comments as well. Thanks for joining us. Okay, man, man, get them nerves a raise too, man. They're not dressing the best, so give them a raise or some. <laughs> Why don't you take that up as one of your causes there, Chuck? Man, you can't just hog all the money because you got <laughs> your name on the show. Good to say goodbye to you right now, Chuck. Thanks for joining us. Uh, all right, man. Thanks for having me. You guys have a great week. All right. That's Charles Barkley. We'll come back. This is the Dan Patrick Show. For true Chicagoans, the White Sox are a part of our DNA. From Hyde Park to Park Ridge, we wear our hearts on our pinstripe jersey sleeves. From 79th through Bridgeport, from Bronzeville to Naperville, we're loyal to the team through thick and thin. We come from all walks of life and neighborhoods, but remain united by what takes place at 35th and Shields. We take pride in our city, and we take pride in the game. So, how fast does this thing go? Depends on who's in the sidecar. It's pretty comfortable in there. Let's go for a ride. All right. Definitely misread this one. Geico Motorcycle. Great rates for great rides. Swing and a miss. Moving a 295-pound refrigerator is not easy. Moving your wife's 17th century colonial stemware collection is rarely easy. Moving Mr. Smooch's is never easy. Fortunately, moving your favorite entertainment with DirecTV is always easy. Just one call before you move is all it takes. Done. The DirecTV Movers deal. Easy now comes with bundles and equipment upgrades too. Call and ask about all the benefits today.
a message from the Pulaski Law Firm. You started there right out of high school, learned your trade and did it well. And the asbestos you handled, well, that was just part of the job. If you worked in the trades and were diagnosed with mesothelioma, get the best care available, then call us. You may be entitled to financial compensation without ever going to court. Call 800-236-6260 and see how we can help. Mesothelioma, don't fight it alone. He's Shaquille O'Neal, the uh, NBA on TNT Hall of Famer, joining us. Where are you right now, Shaq? Uh, I'm at my house in Orlando. I'm sorry I missed you the other two times. I was scuba diving, <laughs> and when I was battling a shark, I lost my phone at the bottom of the abyss of the ocean. I apologize, sir. All right, and I believe you. I think that that is the reason why you were uh, unable to join us the last time. What is the coolest thing yeah, in your house? Coolest thing in my house would probably be... When I walk into the room that I dedicated to my father, because keep in mind, when I was young, uh, my father used to take all my trophies. And I finally asked him why he took all my trophies, and his answer was, so you never be satisfied. So after he passed away, I got all my uh, trophies from uh, AAU, high school, college, the pros. I got all my championship rings. Everything is, is, is in the room dedicated to him. When did you fall in love with Superman? I fell in love with Superman when I first went to the movie. Uh, a white guy that looks like yourself, jumping over buildings, <laughs> racing trains, and just, you know, being strong than everyone. And being that my name started with S, I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm the new Superman. So, like, I immediately went home and got a T-shirt, got in trouble for it, took a magic marker and put the Superman emblem on my chest, and I told my mom I was Superman. She's like, I know, baby, I know. <laughs> Wait, how old were you when you, when you put a Sharpie S on your, uh, on your arm? Uh, just, I probably was about uh, nine years old. But did you say anything to your dad or your mom about getting a tattoo? Actually, I was terrified, even though I was in my, my first year in the league. So I, so I got a small one first. So then when I came home, my father was like, I don't approve of it, but you're an adult now. You're a responsible adult, so go ahead. And then I just went crazy and got both arms up. <laughs> yeah, that was cra you know was crazy? If I had it all over to do it again, I probably wouldn't have not one tattoo. There's a lot of people who feel that way. You know, in, yeah. the, in the moment. Okay, the craziest tattoo you ever got in the moment was what? I have a, I have a gorilla smiling on my right bicep, on the inside of my right bicep. <laughs> what were you, just bored one day and you said, all right, I'm going to get yeah, one? I was just bored. <laughs> yeah, I was just bored. We had Kareem on. We were talking about all these great teams in history and how they would stack up against the Golden State Warriors. And it was Kareem who said, you didn't even mention Shaq's Lakers. He goes, how would the Warriors stop Shaq? So they, you said they couldn't do anything with you. What uh, Your thoughts on you and Kobe against this Golden State team? Uh, you know, the first thing you have to take into account is which rules are we playing by? Are we today's, playing by my rules? No, today's rules. Uh, oh, today's Today's rules, we kill him because just like you can't hand hand check Steph Curry, can't hand check Kobe either. And. Uh